If your child has lost weight or has missed out on normal weight gain, I'm going to show you how a growth chart can help you estimate the weight that they need to catch up. I'll also demonstrate how if you're announcing a goal weight, it may need to be higher. Why all this? Well, for someone with an eating disorder, complete weight recovery is absolutely essential for physical and for mental recovery. So, let's take the example of a 14-year-old girl, and we have lots of good data from her earlier years when she was well-nourished and healthy. Later, I'll tell you more about what happens when you don't have good data. Here's a blank growth chart for girls based on a survey of the American population. I plot this girl's weight across the years, and it's doing what we tend to expect, tracking along one of the percentile curves, in this case, the 75th percentile for weight. What that means is if you lined up 100 girls of that age by order of weight, this girl would be 75th along the line. It means she's part of normal human diversity. There is no reason at all why we should all be on the 50th percentile, which is the middle of a distribution. In the same way as we shouldn't all have the same shoe size or the same hair color, and we don't all need the same number of hours of sleep. Now, the principle we're going on, and as we'll see later, it is only a general guide, is that throughout our lives, as long as we're well nourished, we tend to stay on the same percentile curve. So let's say that the last time this girl was weighed at 12 years old, she was fine on her 75th percentile curve, and two years later, she's got eating disorder symptoms. We weigh her and she's 50 kilos. That's two kilos more than last time, two years ago. This kind of thing can make someone with an eating disorder freak out. But if you look at the chart, you can see she's really fallen off her weight curve from the 75th to the 50th percentile. And though the 50th might be great for some people, it's not for her. For her, that's underweight. So let's look up age 14. Where should she be on the 75th percentile? About 57 kilos. But hang on. That would be a catch-up weight for today, but for a growing youngster, weight is a moving target. What if it's going to take her, for example, six months to regain weight? Let's look at age 14 and a half then. The corresponding weight on the 75th percentile is 58 kilos, eight kilos more than her current weight. Now that's not the whole story. Let's look at the stature graph, the height graph. Can you see how after age 12, probably because of malnutrition, this girl didn't grow as fast as you'd expect. She fell off her height percentile. It's quite possible that her body will want some extra weight to get the energy for a growth spurt, so her weight target may need to be higher. But what if when you plot your child's height data, you see not stunting, but a growth spurt? Here's an example adapted from a young person who's now living a great life, fully recovered from anorexia. This girl happily tracked on the 10th percentile for weight and the 50th percentile for height until age 14, when she had a big growth spurt and her height jumped up to the 99th. I did warn you that the principle that everybody tracks on a particular curve is just a rough guide. While she grew so tall, her weight percentile only jumped from the 10th to the 50th. That wasn't enough. It effectively made her underweight, which with her genetic background was a trigger for anorexia, and she lost weight down to the 20th percentile. She got some excellent eating disorder treatment, ticking all the boxes, but all the same, her team could see that she was stuck. So they supported her to keep raising her weight and they kept going until she reached a good mental state. This corresponded to the 70th percentile, where she has remained happily ever since. Here's another useful thing you can do with a growth chart. You can stay alert to how much a youngster's weight is expected to grow over the coming months. For example, here's a boy who got anorexia in his ninth year. Everyone intervened swiftly, he made a fast recovery, so that by his 10th birthday, he was comfortably back on his 90th percentile for weight. Now you can see how six months later, you would expect his weight to go up by another three kilos, roughly. Another example, between age 13 and 14, his weight gain should be roughly seven kilos. So a growth chart can help alert you that your child might be becoming underweight and vulnerable to relapse.
By the way, just to clear up a common bit of confusion, especially if your clinicians are talking of things like 100% weight for height, this does not mean that the weight percentile is the same as the height percentile. There's no expectation at all for the two to match. Growth charts are only as good as the data you have. Here's a possible source of error. Say you think your child started dieting age 13 when actually it all began age 11. That means any weight and possibly any height that you plot from age 11 onwards is going to give you an underestimate. And you might not be aware of it, especially if you hardly have any data for earlier pre-dieting years. Another note of caution is for kids who were particularly light, tracking on a very low percentile ever since they were toddlers. It may be that this low weight doesn't suit them, that for some unknown reason they fell off their growth curve when they were just a few years old. There is some research indicating that these youngsters are particularly vulnerable to developing an eating disorder in their teens. Presumably for them, weight recovery means getting onto a new, higher percentile weight curve. You should in any case treat any prediction you make from a growth chart as a minimum. Why? First of all, because you may want your child to have a buffer in case of a growth spurt or gastric flu or something like that. Also, because when people battling an eating disorder are fixated on a goal weight, they may be drawn to restrict whenever they go slightly over. So in the same way as you desensitize your child to the fear of ice cream by giving them ice cream, I believe it may be useful for your child to go over any magic number and to experience with your support that they are still fine. There's another reason for going higher. For some people, complete recovery in terms of behaviors and thoughts only happened when they reached a weight higher than that predicted by their growth chart, maybe 10% more, maybe a few kilos more. What if you don't have any good data to plot on a chart? What you should absolutely not do is reach for a BMI calculator or a 100% weight for height number. That would be a middle size fits all approach, which might yield a figure that is way off your child's individual needs. The good news is that it may be perfectly fine not to have a goal or target weight at all. There are plenty of experts who favor a wait and see approach instead. They'll get you to work on weight gain without setting a goal, while also making sure you progress through all aspects of the treatment, such as regular meals, exposure to fear foods, coaching to relearn normal behaviors, attention to psychological needs, and so on. At some point, your son or daughter will reach a great physical and mental state, and that's when you'll know all the boxes were ticked and that whatever weight percentile they're now on is probably what their body needs. Defining recovery according to well-being rather than any set number is summarized by the motto state not weight. I'm sure you have lots more questions like where's the evidence and what's new and what to do if your kid was considered overweight and of course how can someone with an eating disorder cope with weight gain anyway? So check the notes on this video where there's links to more resources where I cover all this. I'm a parent who helps other parents. I've got a book, a website, there's my bite-sized audio collection for overwhelmed parents and I've made some other YouTubes which you're very welcome to subscribe to. I hope this short video was really helpful and I I wish you lots of success very soon.